When I was trying to decide what the project would be for this class, I referred to my sewing library of books. Almost every one of them had aprons. You'll have to understand that most of my reference books are older. Most of them were published prior to 1960. I found a lot of frilly, ruffled hostess aprons that were all the rage in the 1950s. I thought an apron was a great idea, but I didn't want ruffles and lace. I wanted a sturdy apron that can be used when you're sewing. I also didn't want it horribly feminine since my students can be any gender or any age. I set to work designing this apron and this is what I came up with. To be honest, I wasn't really making this apron for myself. I never considered wearing such a thing. When I tried on the prototype and started putting things in the pockets, I realized what a great idea it was. I'm always leaving scissors at the ironing board and kneading them at the sewing machine. I also clutter up my cutting table with stuff and have to clear the entire thing off to actually do any cutting. I quickly realized that if I was wearing all these things, they wouldn't be in the way and I'd have them regardless of where I was at. Suddenly, I was really excited to get my apron done so that I could actually use it. The pattern fits me and I'm 5 foot 4, which is a typical height. If you're smaller or larger, just adjust the pattern for the apron body and the neck strap. The ties are quite long, so they should work for everyone. However, if you're much younger, you might want to shorten them. The two pockets at the hips have gussets, so they hold bulky items and put them within easy reach. They are great for tape measures or notepads. You can make this project out of any type of material. A tightly woven cotton would be very nice, particularly in the summer. I chose a denim for myself. If your sewing machine has difficulty with heavy weights, stay away from the denim and canvas. There are several areas that have multiple layers that might prove problematic for you. The apron is outlined in bias tape. The heavier the fabric, the wider the tape should be. The bias tape is also extended off the hips and becomes the ties for the apron. My pattern is merely a starting point for inspiration. If you want bigger or smaller pockets, just redraw the pattern. You can also turn this into another type of apron really easily. You can change up the pockets and turn it into a great chef's apron. You can also add some loops for hammers and make a wonderful woodworker's apron. The possibilities are endless. The videos go through every facet of construction and a full size pattern is included in your sewing room. There are lots of handy suggestions and tips throughout the videos that apply to all types of sewing. Let's get going on this apron. Before we get started on cutting out the pattern, let's take a look at it and see what some of the markings are so we're familiar with it before we start sewing our apron. First of all, this is the apron body and I printed this out on separate sheets of paper and um, glue stick them together which is probably what you're going to be doing as well. So these patterns are color coded and throughout all the patterns on the site I'm attempting to keep that the same throughout so no matter what pattern you print the coding should be the same. So in blue we have the name of the pattern piece and the grain line and then of course in black we've got instructions. This is half of the front so this is to be placed on the fold of the fabric when it's cut out and it says really big down here just to cut one. There are two gray lines that are a little bit faint but these are placement lines and those are for the pockets. So let's take a look at those pieces. Here's our top pocket and it is placed up here. You'll notice that it has a lot more colors around it. The apron body doesn't have any seam markings on it at all or folds because it's going to be done in bias tape so there's no need for folding over or anything. The top pocket, however, does have quite a few folds. Those are the magenta lines in dashed. And you'll see there's two here. So we're going to fold in once and then fold again and then sew across the top for the top of our pocket. And then we're going to fold all the edges under and then sew it in place. 
you'll see that the blue green line is going this direction just like the body you don't wouldn't want to cut your fabric out if it had a pattern this direction and then turn around and cut the pocket like this because when you went to place it it would be all weird uh, if you're using different fabrics for your pockets and your body then you can spin the pockets any way that you like I would suggest if you're using the same fabric that you go ahead and uh, keep them on the same grain lines the other color on the top pocket is the green and those are going to be stitching lines nothing's folded there's not two pieces or anything but you're going to stitch those down to form the pockets and now we'll look at the bottom pockets piece and this one oops, has got even more little lines on it we've still got the magenta lines that we're folding on and we've got some green lines that we're going to sew our pockets down to the apron body but you'll notice there's a, a really faint little dots here and the magenta fold lines are an outside fold which means when you make it it's going to be folded like this these small pink dotted lines are inside folds which means they're going to be folded like that this is in this would be out so when you form the tuck you'll fold that one out that one in and it will come over and I'll show you once we get this transferred to fabric how that works out so even though it's they're both fold lines one's an inside fold and one's an outside fold now there's a reason that I've chosen to do this if you get into pattern drafting and then into uh, fashion design simulation it's really helpful to distinguish between an outside fold and an inside fold so that's why I've done it here and it just makes your life a little easier because now you know exactly how the fold will work so let's get busy on getting this laid out and cut. Now I've got my apron all cut out and I transfer the markings over. I'm making mine out of this denim. And here's the apron front. You can see I've marked with chalk lines where the pockets are gonna go. And I did the same thing for the big long pocket at the bottom and then the one that goes up here so you'll see if you lay them out that they overlap but once you get all the edges done that won't be the case anymore now I did want to show you that you have another option when I first sketched this out originally I was going to do bias tape around the entire apron and across the top of these pockets and then when I worked on the prototype I thought that was a little bit too much bias tape but if you want to put bias tape at the top of these two pockets you absolutely can and I'll show you it's very simple because what we're going to do um, is fold these tops over twice and you'll notice that I did not mark that because it's much easier just to go over to the ironing board and and press it down and then press it again and these are one centimeter each so what you'll do is press a centimeter in and then roll it another and then sew across the top but if you want to use bias tape across the top just take your pattern and cut on the second magenta line just cut it off and then you can just apply your bias tape to that raw edge and you can do the same exact thing on the big long one as well just cut those two centimeters off and just put your bias tape on the edge so you have an option there if that's something that you're interested in doing instead of doing the edge we're going to start by working on that top pocket 
and you'll want to take it over to the board and press in the sides and the bottom. It's a one centimeter. And then you'll want to baste it. Now when you get to the corners, uh, they can be a little bit tricky because if they're if your fabric is really dense like this denim it's a lot to work with and you don't want a ragged bad point there so I'm going to use this fabric as an example and here I've got two really big amounts that I've pressed in so the whole goal here is to have a nice sharp corner here and some instructions will tell you that you want to cut these on the diagonal and lay them down. What happens is you end up with a really ragged raw corner thingy sticking out and it looks terrible. So the best way to do it is if you find your corner there and lay that in and then bring over the two so they make a nice point and then when you sew you've got nothing raw hanging out there and it's not going to come back to haunt you when it goes through the washer. Now if your fabric is really heavy you may need to trim this down a little bit just to take some of the bulk out but don't trim all the way down to that corner and then lay your sides over and then they'll meet in a nice point like that and then you can sew it up. Once you have those pressed in and basted and you'll notice that my basting is really crooked but it's also very close to the inside and the reason why I did that is so that when I do my final stitching there's no way I'm going to catch that because it's not fun to pull basting out once it's been stitched over the top. So once you have that done, that now you need to turn in the top edge and I want to trim this out just a little bit because I'm working with really heavy fabric. If your fabric's lighter, it's really not as much of a problem. And then it'll be turned one time and then once again. So it's a double turn. Now when you have that done you'll want to actually sew that. Don't baste it unless you're having difficulty and you, you want to baste it before you do your final stitch. But you can go ahead and sew that one across um, because that will seal in the raw edge of the top of your pocket. And trim some of your other edge if you need to and when you've got it turned take a look at it and make sure that you don't have things like that where I've got raw edge hanging out there so if you have to take it at a bit of an angle when you turn it so that you have nice edge there and nothing raw is hanging out that's fine it there's no rules here that say you you can't cheat a little bit so if you need to turn that edge in a little at an angle and then roll it down to keep those raw edges from sticking out then that's what you need to do now we're ready to put the pocket on the apron body and you can go by the placement line that was provided on the pattern and just set it there and then make sure that everything's lined up. You might want to take a ruler and just verify your distances that they're the same because it's really easy when you're marking on a pattern to get that line off. So just double check because you don't want your pocket off going that direction. Once you have it placed exactly how you want it and everything's squared up, 
I'm having a bit of a challenge. It turns out that my denim, I think this stuff has some spandex in it, so it's a little stretchy. Uh, make it sure it's nice and square, and then go ahead and pin it on, and then take it over to your machine and sew the line all the way around to attach the pocket. Now when you get to these edges, you'll want to come off the top and do a back stitch and then forward. So basically you've got three layers because this is a huge point of strain on a pocket and it eventually will pull loose. So go ahead and go do a back stitch there and just make nice sharp turns on your corners and then you'll back stitch when you get to the other side. Now when you finish this, leave tails on your starting and your ending, leave a nice long tail and of the threads and I'll show you what we'll do with those when we come back. Okay, now my pocket's all attached. I've removed all the basting and I have these tails that I asked you to leave. You can see that I went over the edge here and backstitched. Now when you're working with denim, often it's a problem because like in this little corner, I've got a good four layers probably. And there's a substantial depth difference between, you know, just this little apron thickness and this pocket. And when you are trying to do stitching that looks nice, and here I've insanely chosen white thread on very dark, so it's going to show. And if you try to go over that with your machine, it's going to go sideways. It could get stuck and take a whole bunch of stitches in one spot. All kinds of things can happen. Many years ago I bought this little doohickey. It's called a genomajig and I think it's still called that. I saw it at the store not too long ago. Mine is really really old and I don't think they look exactly like this anymore but it's similar. And all that you do is when I started this seam I just set this right here and then dropped my foot on it and started sewing. And so my machine thinks this is all the same depth and it just took off and it went made great stitches I was able to do the back stitching no problems now if I hadn't had this it would have fallen off that edge and made a mess and I used it over here as well so I'm sure you could make something similar it's just thickness uh, you could probably roll up several layers of fabric and um, achieve the same thing if you needed to. The only concern is that you might actually sew it to your garment. But if you happen to see this in a store and you're looking for some inexpensive accessories, if you do work on canvas and denim, I would really suggest that you pick this up because it did a great job. So there's a little toy discussion for you. Now for our tails. When you're putting something together it doesn't really matter if it's just for you or if it's for the most special person in your whole life. You'll appreciate when you take just a couple minutes to do things right and things will hold up better and whenever someone sees your work you'll be very proud of what you've done. And this goes along those lines. Now if we just cut this thread here, like you normally do, it's going to come off. The pocket isn't going to come off, but that thread is going to poke through and you're going to have this little tiny white thread sticking up there for the rest of the life of the apron. And we're going to be doing a lot of these types of seams so you could potentially have little threads and sticking up. And it's just kind of a sign of not the best quality. And even though there's a back stitch here, it's still possible for the thread to come through. So there's a very simple fix. It only takes a second. And a lot of times you can wait until you're kind of done to do these types of things. So I just threaded this needle with the tail. Now I'm just going to go right in 
right where it was and pull it through to the back and then I've got the other end so now they're both on the same side and I can just tie them off and then snip the thread so it only took just a moment to do it I'll do this one show you again but little things like this can really make all the difference and that's kind of why you don't want to get in a big fat hurry when you're sewing because this is the type of stuff that you'll say oh it's no big deal nobody's gonna notice or it's just for me it's just around the house but really you will appreciate even yourself that you've taken the time because of anybody in your life you're definitely worth it as much as anyone else and that's all you do. And no, those little ends won't come flying back out of there. This is a technique that's often suggested for the ends of darts. They'll have you pull the threads through and knot them. But I suggest that anywhere where you have top stitching like this that's really in focus that you want to go ahead and take the extra moment to do that. Now that the pocket is on, we need to put in these seam lines, there are three of them, to create the individual little pocket places. Now these are set up for just general use. Let's see, we've got about eight centimeters, seven and a half on the edge or so. Um, if you want two big ones just do the center line if you wanted seven little ones split it up differently anything you want I'm just giving you a starting point I thought this was a pretty good size uh, pretty much everything fits in it this pocket isn't extremely deep because it's getting up into the chest area so when you sew these again go off the end and back stitch and then come down and your challenge will be to hit the bottom line and stop not cross that line because that would be a very professional looking seam just to go down and hit it you can back stitch on it that probably wouldn't be a bad idea but don't cross it there's no reason to everything's gonna be caught in this bottom edge and go ahead and leave your long tails and pull them through to the back and tie them off. Now my little pockets are all done and I went down to the line. There was probably a couple of things that you learned in this process. Number one, if you were trying to hit that line that meant that you were probably using the hand wheel to run your machine and you don't have to just use the foot pedal. You can definitely make stitches just using that hand wheel and spinning it yourself and you're going to have to if you want to attempt something like this the other thing you might have noticed there's a little bit of an advantage to having that tail I had one that was just a little bit shy of the line and because I had the tail to bring back through I was able to go ahead and put it in on the line and create the last stitch so that it met so that works out really well Everything is tied off in the back and we're ready to move on with the second pocket. Now on this one, you don't have to worry about those edges because those are going to be all the way to the side uh, and end up in the bias tape. So the only thing that you have to be concerned with is the top and the bottom. So go ahead and do that again just like you did you'll turn up the bottom and baste it in place and then turn up the top two times to make the nice edge and top stitch it and then we'll come back and look at what we need to do next now the bottom is all basted and the top is Fold it over and top stitch so that's all finished. Now you, if you lay this out 
on the body you'll notice that it's long and that's because we've got a couple of tucks, actually four of them. Two of these pockets have little tucks in them so they're, they expand a little bit more. Now what you'll want to do, if we look at our diagram, remember that I told you that the magenta line is an outfold and the pink carnation colored line is an infold. So what that means is you'll go out and then this one goes in and they meet. Essentially the magenta line meets the green line and in the process it creates that other fold. And I've just done that one backwards because I was looking at the wrong one. So the magenta meets the green like that. And here we do it again on this side. Now you want to take that over to the machine and just baste it down here because when you do your final attachment scene to the apron itself then these will become permanent so you just need to baste these in place so there's that one on that end and then we have this one on this end as well. Sorry about that. It creates high contrast on the camera, so now you can see a little bit better. And you might want to just pin these so they don't pop, so it'll be a little bit easier when you're basting. But now you can see that when they're done and it's sewn down, these pockets are much larger away from the body and I designed it this way because these are sitting pretty much on the hip and these are great oversized for sewing tapes and things that are bulky and because of where they are placed it's very quick to reach in. Once you have those tucks basted down. You're ready to go ahead and pin out the pocket to the front and you'll notice that now the edges meet on the sides because you put those tucks in. Go ahead and pin out like I've done here. You might want to just baste down the sides so that it'll be ready for the bias tape when you apply it. And you can go ahead and do your top stitching right along the line just like you did up here and then once that's completed go ahead and do the other stitching to create the pockets just like you did up here. Now where there's tucks this is going to be a little bit tricky when you're going this direction because the tuck line is the seam line they meet right up so when you get when you start coming down when you get down here you want to be careful um, that you don't start going crooked. That's the toughest part of it is that especially if you're going high contrast like this you want those to keep those lines straight. If you're off the line at the beginning just stay off the line all the way down at least it'll be straight. It's not critical that these lines 
are exactly in the position that I have put them. You can do whatever you like. So if one of them is off a little bit, it's really not the end of the world. It'll be a lot more noticeable if the line is crooked than if it just is off just a bit. All my pockets are sewn in place now. The tails have been pulled to the back and tied off. So the pocket portion of this pattern is all done now. But I wanted to show you something that happens to me and it ha might have happened to you so I'll show you how to get by. See this little guy right here that I cut off way too short. So it's definitely difficult to thread that needle because there's no way you could get the thread on the needle and then get it through to the other side. So I'll show you a little trick. You can tell this happens to me regularly because I know how to get around it. Put the needle in first in the fabric where you want it to go and take it down as far as you need to. And this is a big eyed needle so I don't need a threader. And then put the thread in. And now you can pull it through. Now whether it's going to be long enough to tie off or not on the other side is another question. You can tie with a very short amount of thread. So I think I can still tie that one off. So I will take care of that. But that's a nice little trick if you end up with a thread that you need to get through the other side but it's not nearly long enough. Put the needle in first, then thread it and pull it through. Okay, now we're ready to tackle the next strap. And this is pretty easy. You've got a center line here, a fold line. So you want to fold it right sides together and stitch that down taking a very narrow seam allowance on this about five millimeter half a centimeter go as thin as you can I know it's tough sometimes to get it to hold straight under the foot so go I'm just going to tell you to go as thin as you can and, and um, then you don't have to do a lot of trimming and you'll have more band to work with. So I will go sew that, that up and then we'll turn it around. Now I've got my strap all sewn. I turned it right side out and pressed it. Now you may choose to do some top stitching on here if you like. I'm going to pass on that on mine because I think I like it just like this. But you can do that if you'd like. And once you get this done, then go ahead and set it aside and we'll get to work on the bias tape. Now before we do that, I wanted to show you quickly an easy way to turn a tube like this. There are all kinds of gizmos and gadgets that you can buy but I found that this is the simplest way and I did a little piece of fabric here to show you. Uh, this is the technique I used on this but this took a little bit more work because it's really firm so I wanted to show you on something a little simpler. So just take a safety pin, make sure that it fits in there pretty loose and what you'll want to do is grab preferably over here in the seam allowance and pin it through. Now if don't grab the end like this because as you work with the safety pin as you're pulling it through it gets a lot of tension on it and you're probably going to just rip the end of this off. So get out here get a nice meaty bite of the seam allowance something that if it gets tugged on it won't hurt your work. And then you want to get down at the end. Close the safety pin 
and put it in the end like this. And you can feel it in there. That's what you're going to work with. And when you first get it started, you're going to have to turn it inside out a little bit. Help it along. Just pull those folds up and they'll turn inside out. And feeling your way along with the pin in there, you've got the head down. Just work your way down the tube. And just pull it off the end as you go. Now one other technique that I saw that you might want to give it a try in some circumstances is they actually lay a cord or really strong thread, sandwich it before as they're sewing the seam and then they sew it on the end. And I'll show you kind of how that works here in a second. But your kind of your goal is to get that pin out of there because it's much better if you can get a hold of the fabric. And there you go. And that works even on some pretty small tubes. Of course, like I was saying, when the fabric gets thicker, like on my denim, uh, it gets a little tougher, but it can still be done. It just takes a little while. So that's how you turn a tube. Now, what I was mentioning before, so when they lay their fabric out to make their tube, they would just take a thread or a cord in here use this for example then they would put the right sides together and then sew their tube down and then you can attach the cord at one end and then you pull it and it pulls it inside through um, I gave it a shot with kind of mixed results but that is one other thing that you can do to turn, that you can give a try. Now before we attach the neck strap, we want to go ahead and take care of the bias tape. And we're going to do the bottom edge first. And if you haven't made any modifications to the pattern, you need about 160 centimeters or 63 inches and all you'll want to do is take the tape and if you've got double folded it'll already be folded but and you're just gonna fold it over on the edge like that and then take it over to the machine and sew that in place now if you do a lot of bias tape work I would suggest that you invest in a special foot for your machine. Most machines can use the feet that are available and it's worth the trouble because they help apply this much quicker and much more even. Um, if you don't do much with bias tape then just you don't need that. You can go ahead and just do it manually. It will just take you a little bit more time. So let's go get that done. Okay, I've got my bias tape all done. The stuff that I was showing you before was way too thin for the denim, particularly when it got to these multiple layers here on the edges. So I found some funky 70s avocado stuff that I decided to use. It's been laying around forever and it looks kind of fun on here. 
Um, this is really wide. I would say Yeah, it's about an inch and a quarter or a little over three centimeters wide. So if you're doing anything with um, denim or canvas, get make sure that your bias tape is plenty wide enough. Uh, I doubt that you'll find funky avocado in your sewing bin, but you never know. So now that we've got the edges all done, I hope that it was fairly easy to apply down here. I intentionally rounded the edges here so that when you applied the bias tape it would be a little simpler than having to do the square corners. Now we're going to do the top and you'll need about 258 centimeters or 100 inches for this part of it. And what you'll want to do is find your ends and put them together so that you can locate the middle of your tape. And we're going to start up here and then go around the edge and then off to the side here and then this is going to be your ties. So it's kind of an all-in-one and that's why you wanted to do this bottom part first is because you're going to take the top part and go right over the top so it will finish that edge off nicely. Now for the corner up here it just it's going to depend on what you're using for tape. Um, this stuff is huge so I think I'm going to just kind of create a little corner with it and then just sew right over it and this is really stretchy too so play around with your bias tape and see what you think looks best if you've got something that's really narrow this isn't going to be that big of a deal I've just got a really wide tape here so you can you know squat it out fold it across and just take a tuck like that um, really you just need to play with what you have because I'm not going to tell you to do it a certain way and I don't think that you know cutting it sewing over here cutting it and then taking the other piece folding the end in and going back down you're going to have huge bulk on the corner so I think you're much better off just working it in, you know, make a little tuck. It'll look fine once you get it sewn on there. Now, I don't suggest that you start sewing a tail and then come up and then start sewing on here and then go around and then go off to the other tail. I think that you need to start up here and sew this side all the way to finish and then come back and then do this side all the way to finish. Um, you, I don't think it's wise to start your sewing your seam off on these tie tails. Okay, now the bias tape's all sewn on. And this very funky green thing going on time to put the strap on. Now you might want to pin this up and put it on and make sure that the strap length is going to be good for you. Hopefully you kind of tested the paper pattern before you cut it out and sewed it all up. Now all you're going to do is attach this as securely as possible. And Generally when you're putting a strap on of any type, the best way to do that is to do a pattern. So if you completed the shopping bag project, you would have seen this on the handles. But basically you want to 
end up with something like that. That's a very secure way of putting a handle on. And I'll put some instructions in the pattern guide for you as to how you would sew this on. But that's how I'm going to attach that. Now, the ends are raw on this, and I don't really like that very much. Um, it just depends on what your fabric is like. I'm going to tuck my ends in before I sew them on just because I've made such a point throughout of not having anything raw or unfinished on this. So I'm going to take the time to tuck those in and then sew those on. There we go. The apron is all done. And you can take the ends and just knot them like I've done here so that they don't come unraveled on you. Or you could have turned them under and finish them off, whichever you like. And the last thing that I would suggest is you're probably going to put things like scissors in these pockets or maybe you want to pack around your rotary cutter. Now, it's everybody's best intention to make sure that that blade is not exposed, but you still have these points to deal with. And those are going to go straight through, probably cut through your seam, and stab you numerous times. So I came up with a little quick idea. Get a hold of <clears throat> an old yogurt container or sour cream. You don't even need one this tall, even the short one would probably work. Something that's pretty firm plastic. And take a pair of scissors, not your sewing shears, and cut out a nice square. Then line it up to the pocket that you think you're going to put the sharp objects in and I actually cut this one a little bit because you do want it to go pretty much edge to edge. And then fold it in half and take a pair of pliers and just kind of go down that edge to tighten it up. And then pick whichever pocket the scissors are going to go into. And you can use a ruler and just shove it down in the bottom. Now one slight advantage is it does kind of open it up a little bit. But now when you shove those scissors in there, they are not going to come out the bottom. They're not going to stab you. And even the rotary cutter, it's it can't, if you forget to close that blade, it can't cut through the fabric or you. These pockets are a little bit shallow. Um, probably these down here are much better for this. So any pockets where you're going to have dangerous implements, go ahead and put a little plastic guard down there and you should be good to go. Now you've noticed probably that the top of this is completely bare and I did that intentionally. So this is where you get to be creative. You can take some fabric paint and you can write name or some words. Uh, you can take some ribbon and make a flower. Whatever you want. So this is your area for embellishment. And feel free to doctor it up any way you like. And that completes the apron project.